welcome to the new series of MCO at Home. And as promised, we are bringing you newer, uh, more exciting personalities uh, as we uh, go through and undergo this movement control order. And uh, tonight we have someone again uh, who is at the forefront of things. Uh, you have seen tremendous growth in his company and he is Mr. YC Chia, who is the founder of Ticket to You. So whenever you see a, a group of people gathering, you're going to think of you know, tickets and he's the man you want to meet. But we know right now with social distancing, uh, we don't have groups gathering. So we want to know, you know what Ticket to You, what YC is up to, and let's go meet the man. YC. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you, Tato Bruce. Right. How are you doing? I'm fine. It's, yeah. it's quite a new experience. Right. <laughs> Just gotten back from grocery shopping, I hear. Yeah, yeah. Changed my guess <laughs> myself. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, you founded Ticket to You. When was that? And how did you go about you know, establishing uh, Ticket to You? As a okay. Um, actually, starting ticket to you is an accident. Mm. It's not intentionally that I want to start ticket to you. As I'm doing IT, so I'm building system for people mm -hmm. And then when I start my first startup, which is I'm doing a vertical search engine. Mm. So from there, I built a lot of uh, platforms like property platforms, uh, car listing platforms, event listing platforms, and booking even booking systems, but for the for the first three years that I just started, I mean, we are an IT guy that we build system for people, whatever they request. Mm. So that is their business. It's not our business. We only know what to do. And then when I start to build it for myself, only I understand that the business world is different. I spend a lot of money. I spend a lot of effort, which I built a, a, a system that I thought uh, is a demand that the, the real world needs, but I'm too naive that I'm not a businessman. I don't really know what's the real business demand yet. They, they don't need a, a, a very good system. They don't need, I mean, they just need something works, not a really good system. So that's why I fell on my first business. And then of course, uh, I, I, I have a difficult time on that time, uh, which I, I still don't want to give up. And I still have my team with me. I, I start. I, I have a few about fifty staff that time when I grow my vertical search engine about three years, and then I want to fail fast and start. I mean, you have to start, fail fast lah. So when I see it's not profitable, then I I cancel the business, then I restart with whatever engine that I have. So I use my event listing engine, and merge with my booking system yeah. so it become a ticketing engine so I, i'm just plug and play with whatever i have right and Did i you found any inspiration from uh similar offerings uh out there you know from actually is is from when Event i'm very for example yeah and when i'm very desperate i got nothing to do that time i i, I need to learn certain kind of entrepreneurship courses or whatever things then I start found that there's a lot of courses there. There's a lot of uh, registration outside, which I found, oh, they use, uh, they use Facebook. They use phone banking. They use uh, this kind of, uh, I mean, you don't know how to register at the time. Yeah. That's why I found that why not I just make a registration system, something like uh, we use Eventbrite, why why Malaysia don't have, or something like we use Japsodi, some kind of uh, system that in, in mm -hmm. the outside world. So, yeah, that time with six person of us, we make ticket to you, and then I get the domain. I bought I bought ticket to you dot com dot mine. That time we don't have ticket to you dot com yet, and then we kick start with uh, two weeks or three weeks. For for the first few weeks, I try to get business, and I try to beg for ticket to sell. And then luckily for the first two months and I was successfully hit about six figures of uh, ticket sales. I mean, that mm. is quite, I mean, well, that's quite sizable. Uh, it, and when was quite, this YC? What year was this? This started um, 
end of two zero earlier of two zero one seven. Right. So it's quite recent. So since then, how has business been? You say you started off with quite a a bang. Yeah. Then six figures. then we quite excited with uh, this kind of. Uh, I mean, we quite excited on this business. Then we keep growing. We keep enhance our system. We keep getting more and more industry players to to use our systems, and. On two zero one seven, we hit about six figures, and two zero one no 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 two zero one yeah two zero one seven we hit about six figures, two zero one eight we hit about seven figures. Yeah. When you're referring <laughs> to figures, are you referring in uh, ringgit Malaysia figures or number of transactions? Uh, ringgit Malaysia. Ringgit Malaysia, Malaysia per yeah, yeah. year, per month? Per year, um, per year, right. per year, per year. Okay, and then last year we hit about eight figures. So every year we hit about six, seven, eight figures. So we, we can see the growth is like a few hundred percent. Correct. I mean, the growth is. Correct, yeah. it's 10x every year on year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And six, until, seven, until even last year, last year we do, we, we keep enhance the scaling part. And not to keep find, finding customer, we reject a lot of businesses because right. we, we couldn't we, we couldn't do so much. We didn't find any business. All the list is come itself. So until we are ready to scale the business this year. Great. So you have built success upon success until we have 2020 and we yes. have COVID 19, and yes. that has hit everyone, uh, you know, by storm. It's a people call it a black swan. And uh, I look at Ticket to You, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, you thrive on crowds, you know, be mm. it selling tickets for concerts, for events yep. such as conferences, forums, sports. Uh, yeah, sports, athletics events. But right now, with the movement control order, uh, you must have been uh, affected in some way. Can you tell us how, how badly? Or how deeply were you hit? Okay, so after we came back from Chinese New Year, we are still like wow, enjoying. We are still right. having our yearly target, right? Mm. And we want to expand to Singapore, expand to Indonesia, all this kind of uh, planning. So when we come back from New Year, and then we found that the COVID is getting serious, all the event organizers that we have, we are keep discussing on how to postpone all the events or whether we want to cancel events. And, and from that time, events start canceling. Uh, we start to do a lot of refunds because every event that we do is more than 1,000 or 10,000 refunds right. cases. And um, uh, this impact us actually quite bad. Even we meet all the companies, we meet all the event team people, we got no idea whether the event have to run or not to run. Because we don't know when, when, when it will be better or when we will be locked down or anything. So right. we were quite lost actually. And from that time on, actually our daily sales dropped until four figures a day, about a few thousands a day. So yeah, because we, we, some we do still selling a lot of a virtual events like virtual run or virtual seminars. I mean, this is still selling. So when it dropped to four figures, it's quite, uh, it's quite because our margin is very small. And mm. we, other than doing ticketing, we also do event check-in. We do this kind of technology check-in, uh, this kind of technology part. And since event is canceled, all our, 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 our booking have to be refund or, or anything. I mean, this really hit us badly in, in our cash flow. Yeah, then nothing we can do. So I do think of a lot of ways on how to how to overcome these things. And I did, I mean, from time to time to from COVID, from MCO until today, I did, I did show a lot of, uh, I mean, efforts that what we have been done and not what we are talking that we want to do. So from day to day, I, we, we, built, we built certain, uh, we built a COVID track system. Is uh, as a CSR because we are expert in uh, QR scanning. Right. So it's similar like how China doing. So we do it as a CSR with certain associations, and we also uh, enhance our check-in system. Our check-in system basically we use QR code and facial recognition. 
So mm. now we enhance our check-in system with a thermal. So we detect thermal, detect faces, detect mask, and then we check in the person. So this one, it can be widely used more than event. It can be used in any shopping malls, hotels. It can be used in, in even more places that they need. And of course, uh, there, there's much more thing that we are still uh, in, in R&D. Yeah. And now we do a lot of donations for the associations. The most, the most exciting one is uh, recently uh, we work with uh, Zoo Nagara. So the donation for the Zoo Nagara, which uh, we help them in uh, technology and all this claiming part, all this certificate part, which also a CSR project. Right. I just, I just want to go back again to hmm. uh, the financial and the business fundamental part of it. So you mentioned that once the MCO was announced, uh, I, I know I even had an event uh, with you. Yeah, yeah, we first, yes. Which was supposed to take event. place on the 19th, which is the day after the, the second day of the MCO. And that event was canceled as well. And we didn't know whether to continue or not. And we were still deliberating it uh, as you know, late as the week before on Friday. Mm. So we know how sudden this came. And it, it, it not only hit you, it hit us as well. And, but you were saying, I still don't see, you, you said you do CSR program, there's a lot of research program, uh, there's a lot of uh, 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 you know, programs for checking on thermal facial recognition. Where do mm. these customers come from? I just need to see where is the source of revenue for you now that all these events have been cancelled. So okay. how are you coping with it? You know? Uh, okay, in, in this kind of a cash flow, right? Hmm. Okay, our cash flow, we can actually still hold for quite a long time for about right. half years because actually our staff is not, our, our team is not so big. We hmm. are only about 17 of us. Right. Okay, so 17 of us, we have been together for more than three years. This 17 of us, I mean, we are very strong bonding and we, we face a lot of... Uh, up and down together. I mean, this, of course, is a big hit to us. So uh, before, actually, um, on March, we already start to plan on our uh, cash flow, on how yeah. we can overcome this. And on, before even lockdown, we or, I already told all my, all my teammates that we leave no one behind. We leave no one behind that, uh, so to let them really understand, uh, we, even if, we have we we'll still finish and uh, that's why yeah. hello yeah yeah okay so, so for the market. csr project mm -hmm. for the csr project actually yes we gain attention we gain exposures at the same time i launched uh, our facial recon the thermal facial recognition system that one is a one off uh, uh, machine which hmm. we sold to retails, we sold to schools, we sold to uh, governments and, and others. Uh, so this is a cash, this is a uh, immediate cash. So they have to pay me hmm. and then I have to manufacture it. Right. And I have to deliver to them. Hmm. I have to help them to install. I mean, this is where beside we doing CSR or beside we doing exposures, we also gain, uh, I am also in the meantime doing, selling another, another business that, for the temporarily one. Right, so you've got different pillars under your business. So one is on ticket yes. sales where there's transaction. The other one is you enable and facilitate part. registration of events and yes. of course supplying the, the equipment. We make it for the public use, maybe as equipment selling. Right, is this still considered an, an essential goods or essential service during this MCO? Is this still uh, ongoing? Actually, actually, I'm not planning to build these things until there is a few customers who calling me hey they say hey ticket to you uh, so they know me ayc um i know you have you got kiosk yes we got kiosk for exhibition for events i i know you got facial recognition yes we have can so actually it's the client who asked us they told us their pain they told us that oh we are doing we are factory we we need to uh, the government say 50 percent of staff can go to work and then 50 percent we have to record the temperature we got few thousand. There's too troublesome. Can your system just tweak a bit and help us? 
So I can just use your facial recognition. I can just get the temperature and then I just want to print out the report to the, for the government. Right. This is how they told us. And then that is how where I start the things. I only, I start the things. Okay, I do it. Then can you pay this or not? Okay, they say can. Then say, wow, if you can do this, I got a lot of people want to do this. Okay, then, then only we got the demand. Then we got to build it. And then we right. faster lot, life it and we sell to them. So this is your buffer during this, this period, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the meantime, you mentioned something very interesting, which is about uh, facial recognition, you know, mm -hmm. as a form of ticketing. Because previously, you got to produce either a QR code or a printed uh, yep. ticket whatsoever. Right now, uh, you have got your face. Uh, does that Actually, our facial right recognition now? is last, last year already have. Oh, does that work right yeah. now? Because as you are moving in the future, I would see a, a, a new normal. People would be wearing masks because they will be more careful. Will the facial recognition technology uh, see through people who are wearing masks? Actually, we can, we can recognize you with masks. We can recognize you with masks. We can, we can low down the, the, the recognition percentage. Right, can low so it's down good it. to recognize yeah. the top part of your face, your yes. eyes, and, and, and other skull structures. Yes, yes. That's it's possible. very, very sophisticated. And what level of accuracy are we looking at? Actually, the setting is dynamic. <laughs> we can set, wow. uh, yeah, we can set 60%, 70%, 80%. It's, it's up to us to set for the things. And because uh, before, before this COVID-19, we... Last year, we already have our facial recognition kiosk with Malaysia Board of Records. We already got our Malaysia Board of Records for the kiosk. So the problem with, there's not much of uh, organizers who are willing to use the facial recognition because to them, it's another level higher. They, they don't want to be made. I mean, if they get too high, they cannot come down. So they don't want to uh, uh, offer their clients too high because the, the pricing and, and they, they are not sure about that. And the price, the, the customer, they are cust I mean, we work with event organizers mostly. So their customer also have a lot of uh, uh, PDPA issue on this kind of uh, facial, fa they are not clear about that thing. So I mean, this MCO actually, it pushed earlier for this technology for them to use. And it's, it's very good for us. We don't, need to, we don't need to explain more. I mean, you know that this is necessary. I don't even want to touch this thing. I don't even use, I don't want to take my card to touch also. If I go to any of my building lift, I can just recognize my face and then you know which floor I want to go. I mean, this is so efficient that actually it's all possible. So this is actually, it, it moved earlier everything. Right. So you have discovered a new, uh, it's a new way, you know, a new product, uh, an extension of your suite that you can offer your customers. Very yeah, interesting. Yeah. And speaking of customers, uh, you seem to have moved beyond the traditional event organizers, forum organizers, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, organizations such as this. You seem to have gone into CSR as well. Uh, I read, I went into your website, and you did mention um, a Zoo Nagara effort, you know, yeah. on donating to the animals. And, uh, and earlier, you also talked about a kind of a COVID check-in and tracking system. Yeah. Can you elaborate yep. a little bit on the Zoo Nagara and this uh, tracking system? Okay, for Zoo Nagara, actually, the, the whole process, um, maybe some organization, they will think that it is easy for them to collect money themselves. But actually, if you have this kind of campaign, if everybody just bang into you and you have to manually check for the bank in, and you have to issue e-ticket, uh, no, you have to issue your certificate to each of the people. If you have 100 of animals, you have 100 type of certificates and to write their name in, to send to them. And the package also come with a lot of different things. I, maybe I donate, I, I buy this package, I get entrance. I buy this package, I get a notebook. There is a lot of things that manual cannot work. So Zoo Nagara, actually, we worked with them for a few years already. Even Zoo Walk, a few of their events inside Zoo. Actually, we already uh, we already working with them. So they know where is our capability. And even like sometimes we do some uh, sports or Zoo Walk, there is a certificate issue from our system. It means you bought the ticket, 
you go to the event, you check in, and then immediately you can get your certificate. I mean, with your name printed automatically. So they know that we already have this kind of systems. So they work with us and then they, they I mean, which all, mostly organizers or our, our clients, they know that all this kind of, uh, of uh, system we have is benefit them. I mean, we don't charge extra as well. Right. And you did mention that even during the MCO period, right, um, your transaction has gone from three figures and it jumped back to seven figures uh, during yeah, the MCO yeah. period. Uh, yeah. How much of that, you know, comes from CSR uh, activities? Okay, we, we do not only for Zoo, we have a lot of other CSR as well. So if you go to ticket to youcommy slash COVID-19, we have a special campaign, we call it, um, Ticket to You Special Promo Relief. So this this one, this campaign, we even listed in uh, MDAC. So we, we try to help a lot of, uh, with our technology we have, we try to help a lot of SME, which is not limited to event. You can use my technology, you can use my system as a, a pre-sale of your product. If you are doing retail, you can pre-sale of your product or pre-sale of your vouchers. You can pre-sell your services. You can sell certain product that is, is essential. So you can do delivery. You can sell even food. So we have tracking, tracking system as well. So all this is ready. So that's why we offer to this NGO and, and SME, you don't need to create your website. You don't need to pay so much of a charges to, to others delivery. This is all we try to cut half or even not much profit for them to immediate kickstart their, their business within, within hours or within minutes, we can set up their things. Wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. So mm. it looks like your, your, just your simple uh, infrastructure and architecture of your ticketing system in event organization and support and registration, you're able to pivot and you're able to expand into uh, many other areas such as uh, you know, you are talking about bus ticketing and you are now talking about CSR mm. efforts. So you, have, you, you seem to have expanded uh, your, your offerings. Uh, yeah. Before we, we, we continue with that, that's really interesting, but I just need to ask you something. I read that you were going for a new round of uh, fundraising. Uh, mm. You intend to raise between 12 to 20 million. Uh, how is that happening right now with the MCO? <laughs> Are you still on that same trajectory? Because in that fundraising, you talked about expansion into other parts of ASEAN. You're talking about uh, you know, increasing yes. events and all that. Has it been somewhat derailed or are you going to, you know, how are you going to come back to that path or are you going to set a new path? Um, actually, the fundraising, um, the, actually, we are not really, uh, we are not really looking, I mean, it happened, when my when we try to tell the public that we are in we are inviting interested party to be our strategic partners, it's not a public fundraising. We are not doing any public fundraising. We and we are just, uh, I mean, for so for so long actually we never had uh, any investors. Okay, so we are just working ourselves, and we think that it's time for us to go regionally. We, it's time for us to go Singapore. We just bring the technology to Singapore. We just bring our check-in system to Indonesia. This is the two countries that we are targeting. And of course, the first thing we think about, of course, is money. So um, we, we don't want to go for a so-called fundraising, but we, I'm more interested to look into strategic partners. We are mm. still capable to, to, to expand ourselves. But we hope if we can find a same strategic partner that have the same ways, like same vision with us, and they have more experience on this, they can guide us on this. For example, if they have resources in Singapore or they have resources in, in Indonesia, this is where uh, they, we can accelerate even faster than we are go for any public financing, you give me money and then I go to expand, I spend even more money or time to do these things. That's why actually we are trying to attract strategic partners, but not really, I mean, investors. Right. Which 
I'm not even go for any serious or we are not going for any crowdfunding. And we are just telling the public that we are okay with any strategic partner to work with us. But right. that news come on February, which after New Year. And we never know that it crashed with the COVID-19. So, I mean, and of course, once the news come out, I got a lot of uh, interested parties who, who are interested. And it's my first time to do pitching as well. And I never do any pitching or, do, or start anything that pitching that. Okay. So, and after MCO, everything I, I just thought. People ask me, I say, it's not a good time for you to invest as well. It's not a good time for me to tell you my timeline as well because I'm not sure and you are not sure. Maybe you are bleeding. Maybe I'm bleeding. And it's not fair to you or to me to hit any target that you want or I, right. I can't even forecast what is happening. Mm. That's why if now I'm going for fundraising, you will thought that I got no money to survive. But no. That's why we, we, I try, we try to hold this part maybe next year's until we are stable first. Right. I mean, as a responsible founder or company, we, we don't want to just get money from anybody. True, we appreciate that. And, uh, and, and it just shows that you have the fundamentals uh, in, your, in your company to hmm. you know, go through. You did mention you have enough reserves to pay salaries. You are very lean in your operations. You are able to transform and pivot when the time uh, comes. That's those are very, very uh, interesting and very exciting. Now, I think it's because we are a small company. <laughs> yeah. Under the definition of SME Corp, yeah, you are still considered, considered flawed, yeah. small, but I don't think it's size that matters. I think it's about productivity, uh, growth potential. Uh, that mm. really, really uh, matters for an investor. You know, the amount of upside. And uh, so far, I'm, I'm hearing good. Now, is business going to be as usual for ticket to you, you know, in the post COVID era? And how are you going to change? Because you did talk about going back to fundamentals, about sustainability, about looking at where the real core, where the real business is. Do you see businesses, new businesses coming from, uh, say, international, new businesses? being churned out from your CSR uh, activities? What kind of value do they bring? Uh, these thermal scanners, will the demand still be there post-COVID? Uh, AI on facial recognition. How would people's uh, behavior change and how are you going to change according to that you know, in the medium and longer term rather than just surviving for this period? Yeah. Um, I think... After MCO, I think everybody will be even more uh, careful mm. on whenever place, whatever place that they are going. And data is the most important thing that uh, we, we need to capture, which big data we are talking about. Like um, whoever in touch with who, where you go, um, uh, what, what kind of uh, event that you have, uh, you, you've been joined, who sit beside you even. Um, like who go with you together, whatever hotel that you go, flight that you take, all this data is uh, very important for, like we see COVID-19 is a, is a easily spread things. If we know whoever beside you, whoever go with you, whoever around you, this will be very easily, easily right. track these people. Are you so, assisting like the, the Ministry of Health? Because right now, they are not just doing blanket testing, they are testing based on clusters you know, and a mm. lot of that is based on traceability. And I see a huge potential for uh, ticket to you. Yeah, that, you that, that is where the, the yeah. facial recognition is more on AI. We use uh, artificial technology uh, in, to, to detect uh, our behavior and our faces. So, so this is where actually big data can actually help in, uh, in detecting if we can place this, this uh, facial recognitions or this kind of, uh, we have another devices called, called uh, facial, what, what do I know? Face count, to get to you, face count. 
we can just mm. place on an exhibition center. So we can count how many people we can use AI to, to manage, to, to, to calculate whether you are male or female, whether you are, you are what, what age of you, we, we, we justify on, on the AI technology. I mean, we, if we make it as another facial recognition plug into this thing, so we can recognize almost everybody who go to this kind of places. So we can track all these things easily. We can match whether, I mean, this thing can work on almost out of, out of uh, things that we call it, not, not event. It can be any public places. It can be shopping right. malls. Like right. It can be buildings. This actually helps a lot of, uh, a lot of us or even the MOH to trace these spreadings. Right. Amazing. So I see two clear distinct branches. One is you facilitate uh, uh, or at least enable offline mass gatherings. You can just say you can still gather, but we will make sure you gather in a safe way because we would know if somebody that is, um, could be a potential uh, carrier do not come in, right? Mm -hmm. And if they do, we are able to track where he is and at least we are able to take action before this thing uh, spreads out of control. Uh, you are also able to check uh, on temperature and do all kinds of, uh, of, of preventive measures. That is offline. But it, there are also gatherings right now, especially during MCO, such as this. You know, we gather and we use Zoom calls, uh, Hangouts, WeBacks, webinars, you name it. So people are gathering online. Do you see a space for Ticket to You to operate? Or do you see this as a threat to ticket to use uh, business um, because I don't think it's a threat. Do something like you know could just extend your yep. offering and do ticketing, right? Yep. Uh, what yep. are your views? Uh, um, I don't see this is a threat. I think this is a very good tools that even we use it almost every day. Um, we even there's a lot of people that we zoom with them or we google with them we know that it's their first time to use it this is where it's a maybe it's a norm to us but it's the first time to they use it every time we we talk to others people they, they always say it's their first time so it increased the speed of the technology digital things to to the most people and um you see uh, it, it won't be a threat to us as all these kind of event nowadays is a uh, like it's a fresh things to everybody so people won't pay money to do that i mean if people don't pay money to do to, to watch the things means like normal event that we are not engaged to help them so for the large event or the large scale event even webinar or there's an online you need you need to reach to more people to attend your professional event so mm. how are you going to reach all these kind of people how are we going to offer even more details uh, business matching solutions. You, you can't just do a webinar and then you can offer and, and ask people to bought the ticket. And uh, first, you don't have a ticketing system. Second, you don't even have mass crowd to join your event. Third, you don't have a, a complicated pooling or survey system to track who and who, um, uh, what, what is their behavior. And the next thing is all these, all these, all these people joining event, like how we do are in real, we want networking. We want business matching. I can't, I, I won't just watch your event and then I can get business matching. No, I, I, for me, if I can't get business matching, I won't bought the ticket. So how we have business matching solution, we can let uh, like 1000 people who come to this virtual event or not virtual event, you can just bought the ticket immediate. You can watch maybe the virtual seminar and you can use our business matching app. You can, you can find the related, the related uh, professionals. You can talk to them. You can, you can get their contacts. You can, this is a business matching, which actually we launched last year, our business matching app. So this is the real time that we can show people that is the value of you buying a ticket to attend an event. You get net business matching, you get your business 
and not just watching online, you get inspired and then you can have a business. No, exactly. this is a business. Yeah. That, that's really, really profound. So it just shows that, you know, at the end of it, you can never have a fully online world. We can never fully live in our homes. At one point, we need to get out. Mm -hmm. We need to meet real people. We need to, to do business yeah. over there. And that's where you come in in an offline, online, uh, hybrid kind of environment. So yeah. basically, we are not just a ticketing company. Yeah. Right? I say we are technology solution providers. We are just my my just my brand is more onto ticketing. Just that's why we are more focused on whatever ticketing right. type. So, if I again may rephrase my question, why does ticket to you exist? You know, if it's not just to sell tickets. Why do you exist? Why? Wow. That means you say you're a technology provider, but why do you exist as a technology provider? What kind of value do you bring? Um, we try to ease, like my, my slogan, Ticket to You is a online ticketing platform and registration. We try to, the last part is, we try to ease the event organizers and the buyers. We try to, help them an uh, easier way to simpler their buying, their, their purchasing, their registration, uh, their registrations uh, process. Process and experience. The process experience and the event organizer, they can focus on their event, their ground and their, their, their deck. So they don't need to worry about registration users or or this kind of ticketing part, right. payment we part. Payment is the most most critical part. Actually, right. payment the, the tiny tiny the tiny tiny amount to work with payment gateway or banking. All these things is very headache. Yeah, so I, I think that's that's true what you say because it doesn't doesn't matter whether you are watching a concert, boarding a bus, visiting a zoo you know, uh, donating to animals or gather at a religious uh, gathering. Uh, probably not the best time to say it, right? But in whatever you do, you try and make it as painless as possible and make the experience as pleasurable as possible. Yeah. That right? Yeah. So yeah. That, that would be your, your mantra. And I think that has put you in good state because you didn't abandon ticket to you. You still remain true to your to your principles, to your, you know, to your objectives uh, of, of Ticket to You, and I applaud you for that. What is your advice for uh, entrepreneurs out there right now, you know, struggling with this uh, COVID? What are the three things that they must do? Because we mentioned the word sustainable a lot of times. In order to sustain through this uh, incredibly challenging period until we see uh, an eventual rebound? Um, I don't know whether I got three things. <laughs> okay. But what I think is, uh, for first, uh, we, we need to have a short-term plan for now. We can't plan for too long. So the short-term plan is how to, to have a, how to control our cash flow and how to sell immediate product. What, what do we have? What do we have now in our hand? What do we know to value the customer that we have? Like if I have this kind of, this bunch of customers, what do I have that I can help them? Once I help them, means when they're making money, then I'm making money. So that's why I use my technology to help. Even I, I, I put the lowest rate or, or even no profit to help them first. When everything turns back to normal, I know they will, they will come back to me. They will remember who helped them on the first place. So this is the first thing that, think of what product do you have to value your current customer first. Just list down your top 10, top 20 customer. Don't need to be go so far. Just, just on your current customer first. Right. That's it. And those are <laughs> wise words uh, indeed. I mean, this is really, really helpful. If you can tackle your top 10, 20, you have already taken care of probably 80% of your Yeah. Of your the, second part, right. the second part could be your team. Mm. I mean, 
they don't know what are we suffering and actually they are also very miserable they want to help the company as well but how can they help so perhaps they are not just working into their current position anymore this is a this is a new crisis that we are facing perhaps they are not just the title that they have to do their current job anymore perhaps you can talk to the team and try to find more of their potential that they can help in this in this situation perhaps it's just an admin maybe she knows something that the 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 other group of people or or the the range of salary people what they need so maybe we can help this kind of people to understand more yeah. i think we can find a lot of talent within our company as well okay you have a third one <laughs> third. <laughs> third is uh, i think this is the best time that we can actually uh, stay home with our families. I mean, we are entrepreneurs. We are just so busy with networking, working, meetings. I mean, this is really a good time for us to to be every day. I mean, even I, I also washing dish, <laughs> washing plates almost every day, helping my wife and uh, with my kids. I mean, this is the best time for us to actually appreciate this thing. Maybe once the life that. We have this thing. We hopefully it's a once in a life that we have this thing. This three, this few months, I think, yeah, we have to appreciate all these things, lah. Right. Okay. Wise words indeed. You did come up with three. Number one, stay close <laughs> to your customers, right? The big ones ask whatever you want, they want, and you try and enable it for them. Number two, stay close to your people. It's time to break ranks. They are after all. Uh, Part of your working family anyway listen to them they may have solutions that you have never thought of before uh, right and thirdly yeah. speaking of family go back to your real families because that would be the bedrock in your life you know that enables you to have that confidence to go out there and uh, seize the day right so thank yeah. you wise words indeed so we have YC Chia the founder of Ticket to You with us who has shared his challenges and how he has overcome it by sticking to his values, to his mantra of what he does. And I'd like to, uh, YC, thank you for really spending okay. your time with us. Uh, it's almost an hour. Yeah. Really appreciate it. And, uh, you stay safe. Keep safe, so, ladies and gentlemen. This is the end of the second series of MCO at Home with Mr. YC Chia, founder of Ticket to You. Stay safe and stay productive. Thank you. Thank you.